Good morning, everyone. Monday morning. Victory Monday morning. Haven't had a victory Monday morning in a while. In fact, it had been over a month. And it might not be the last victory Monday of the season. In fact, it may not even be the second to last or third to last victory Monday of the season. So... Let's talk about it, because this is a very realistic scenario, and the way in which the team chooses to respond to it, if it does happen, is crucial. So, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The Seahawks won yesterday. It was a game a lot of people, myself included, didn't think they were going to win. It was a game that I, I thought the trend would be broken. You know, we, we own the 49ers, Russell Wilson owns the 49ers, Pete Carroll owns Kyle Shanahan. I thought that stuff was going to go the other way now, but hey, it didn't. And I'm happy about that. I like winning. I like beating the 49ers. But we got to talk about what this might mean for the rest of the season. By the way, sorry if you guys notice all the green screen fuzz around me, uh, I'm, it's a lighting thing. I'm working on it. I'm going to try to fix it in the next few weeks here. But anyway, so we beat the 49ers. Next up, we got Houston. Look, it's a road game, but it's not really going to feel like a road game. Houston is awful. They might not even be able to play Tyrod Taylor. They they might be trotting Davis Mills out there. I, I, yeah, Davis Mills. Very winnable game. And then you go to L.A. to play the Rams. Eh, the Rams aren't playing very good, but they usually beat us anyway. It's a bad matchup for us. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, you're not looking great there. Then you've got the Bears and the Lions back-to-back -back at home. The The Bears, they're not one of the worst teams in the league, but they're, they're bad. And I'm interested to see who we end up playing at quarterback in this game, but that's a pretty bad Bears team. Very good chance you can handle them at home. And then you've got the Lions. They finally got a win earlier uh, yesterday, actually. But it's it's not a good Lions team at all. You would expect to be able to win that game even if you're a bad team. The, the Lions, look, they've had some bad luck this year, but they are legitimately a really bad team. They have a really bad defense. You should be able to put up points on them, period. You should be able to win that game if you're not a complete embarrassment. And then week 18, you've got the Cardinals who may be resting starters. So if they do, there is an opportunity to finish this season 5-1. and one. Now, this is not about the playoffs. Let me be upfront about that right here, right now. I am not saying this team can get hot and make the playoffs. Uh, technically, they can. I'm not talking about that. I think that is such a pipe dream that I, I would feel like an idiot for even sitting here and trying to talk about it. Just just stop, okay? Just, just if it happens, great. I'm not going to talk about it until it happens. What I am talking about is how will the team react to that? Finishing 5-1 and one against a really soft schedule. Showing improvement. Showing that they are better by at least some amount than their earlier performances this season showing that maybe they were starting to get things together a little bit at the end when it was already a little too late what would the team do <clears throat> because we we got that report a couple days ago from jody allen saying she's not happy and she's not looking at this as a one-year thing and uh garofalo walked it back a little bit he said to be clear, I'm not saying that she's going to go fire everybody or go run into the locker room with an axe and start chopping people's heads off. He, he, I just meant that she thought this was an issue and wanted to fix it, which, okay, that, that's a little less severe. But the point is, we got that from uh, Jody Allen. But then, if we finish the season going 5-1, and one, which, as I just laid out, completely possible, does that dull her blade a little bit does she look at that and go oh okay we don't need to do anything we got unlucky this season we would have made the playoffs if wilson didn't get hurt is that gonna be what it is is she gonna slam the brakes on her off-season plans and just go okay wilson's coming back 
Carroll's coming back. Schneider's coming back. Waldron's coming back. Norton's coming back. Everybody's coming back. Everyone gets a reprieve. Everyone gets a presidential pardon. Everybody out of jail. You're all good to go. Is that what is going to happen if we do this? Because, look, I like wins, but I know enough about football to know that wins against teams like Houston and Detroit and a bunch of backups to a team that isn't even trying to win if that ends up happening hypothetically against Arizona. I know those don't really count for nothing, but sometimes coaches, sometimes general managers, sometimes owners, they fall for that stuff. Okay? And I'm all for this team winning some games here at the end to prove that some of the pieces are salvageable, but I don't want that to include guys like Carroll and Schneider because their drafting is the main reason why I think that is unsalvageable. So those guys, no. Independent of winning and losing right now, they can't draft. I don't want them here. Cautionary tale for y'all, okay? And I talk about this example sometime in stream. 2019 Atlanta Falcons had Dan Quinn at head coach, right? So follow me through here. Dan Quinn, ever since that Super Bowl appearance, things had gone downhill quickly. And it was abundantly clear to everybody in the world, Dan Quinn needed to get fired. They needed a new head coach in Atlanta. He had had his window. The window had closed. They blew their chance. Time to do something else. So the 2019 Falcons started the season 1-7, basically out of it by the bye week. Most people expected Dan Quinn to get fired during the bye week, but they didn't do it. Then they won two games, uh, lost two games. Uh, back on the hot seat, everyone's saying, ooh, is he going to get fired today? Is he going to get fired tomorrow? Is he going to get fired next week? Uh-oh. Four-game winning streak to close the year. Blow out the Panthers. They beat the 49ers on the road. That 49ers team would go on to make the Super Bowl, by the way. Beat the Jaguars. Beat the Buccaneers in overtime. They finish 4-0. They finish 6-2 overall. And Arthur... Um, what's the name of the owner of the Falcons? Arthur Blank? I think it's Arthur Blank. Excuse me if I forgot his name, but I think it's Arthur Blank. Goes, oh... All right, we figured it out. We unlocked the code. It just took a little too long, man. Um, if we had just managed to eke out a couple of those uh, early season wins, if we had managed to maybe get to even something like 3-5 and five instead of 1-7, we might have gotten in. So let's just run it back. Let's just bring the boys back in. Let's just bring back Dan Quinn, bring back our coaches. Let's just do everything the same way. Obviously, the way we played in the second half of the season is more indicative of how we're going to play in 2020. Nuh-uh. Falcons went 4-12. and Awful season. Dan Quinn starts out 0-5. 0-5. Then he gets fired. But the season's already shot, right? Like, 0-5 is a hole that's almost impossible to crawl out of. So Raheem Morris takes over. They actually go on a little bit of a win streak, or they have a good run, and then they close out the season by getting crushed. So basically, the point I'm trying to make here is that the Atlanta Falcons got fooled. They bought into the end of the season win streak. That didn't mean that much after the team had already been effectively eliminated. They won a bunch of games after it wasn't going to matter to their ability to make the playoffs. And the Falcons fell for it, and because of it, they lost another season. Because imagine if this 2020 Falcons team had already moved on to their next coach. Imagine if they had already found their guy that they were going to move forward with instead of wasting another season on the Dan Quinn show when that was clearly a dead end. So Atlanta fell for it. It cost them time. I don't want to see this Seahawks team fall for it. Because look, I am more than happy to watch these next five games to see if Wilson continues to advance in this offense. I am more than happy to reevaluate my stance on his ability to play in a rhythm and timing based offense. But I've seen enough of Pete and John. Bottom line, period, okay? There's way too much stuff there that I'm tired of it. I, I can't 
I can't handle the bad drafting. I can't handle the lack of splash free agent moves. I can't handle the utilization of massive resources into a position like safety and and uh, linebacker. There's too much stuff with Pete and John. Mostly Pete. May maybe John's not as mixed up in that stuff as it looks like he is. That's possible. But Pete especially, even, even if we go on a win streak here, I don't think Pete's salvageable. And nothing's going to move me off of that. So if Jody Allen gets it in her head that a meaningless win streak at the end of the season against terrible teams means, oh, well, everything's okay now, then we have a problem. So I've given you my cautionary tale of the Atlanta Falcons. Dan Quinn had to go. Everybody knew it, but they talked themselves into a meaningless win streak at the end of the year being representative of more than just a meaningless win streak at the end of the season. I don't want to see this team fall into the trap. I don't. I do not want any part of that. Because like I said, winning and losing on the field is one thing. But I don't want to see another Pete Carroll draft. I don't. I, I, I can't handle these passing up the obvious value pick, passing up the obvious needs, going for these unconventional picks, and then trying to act like you're the smartest guy in the room when you're the dumbest guy in the room and everyone else is laughing their ass off at you. I had to spend the whole Sunday night game last night listening about how Creed Humphrey's the best center in the league. I'm not going to get into that right now, but Pete, there's nothing you can do over the last five games that can convince me you are salvageable. So that's what I can say about that. Please don't fall for it, Jody Allen. Keep the same energy going into this offseason. See you guys later. Go Hawks.